When I was little, all I'd want to do was play outside, watch the stars, or go to the lake. I love the little things about nature, the way simply watching and noticing can make whole worlds rise to the surface unmasked. Now, nature is my provider. It is beautiful, and it is beauty, and it is most profoundly home. Each morning we wake up to the sun rising over mist-washed mountains. What will happen when the mountains are taken away? When I was a kid, I played in the waves. I used to love the feeling of water touching my toes. Soon it may be up to my waist. I don't want to be the generation to swim through the last coral reef. I don't want to be the generation to see the last snowfall. I don't want to be the generation to hear the last bird song in the wild. This is our Earth. It has stayed the same throughout most of human history, but now things are changing. We are exploiting our home, our one true resource, in ways that may be irreversible. Our children will grow up in a different world. They will not know the Earth as we do now. This is our Earth's story. These are the things we couldn't bear to lose. Most people are intimidated by climate change because they cannot understand the science behind it. In actuality, it's very simple. The Earth is not a cold, dead rock in space. Life is possible on Earth because we have something called an atmosphere. The atmosphere is a thin layer of gases surrounding the Earth's surface. It's what you're breathing right now. The Earth acts like a greenhouse. The sun rays shine on the Earth, thus heating the Earth. Some of the rays bounce off into space, and others heat the Earth before bouncing off. For the past 200 years, humans have been burning fossil fuels as fast as we can find them. This release of carbon thickens the atmosphere. The thicker the atmosphere, the more time heat is trapped inside of it. For the entirety of human civilization, the Earth's average temperature has been at zero degrees Celsius. In the past 200 years, we have warmed the Earth 0.8 degrees Celsius. This may not seem like a lot, but scientists have warned that if the Earth were to reach 2 degrees Celsius, there would be dire consequences. It will result in the sea level rise of 3 to 6 feet, sinking many island nations. It would also cause the failure of crops in previously fertile areas. Unfortunately, we have already committed to raising the temperature of the Earth to at least 2 degrees Celsius. Because of the 50-year time lag, we will not see the result of the carbon we emit now for another 50 years. I know what you're thinking. The Earth will get hotter, humans will move around, we will adapt, and then all this hubbub will die down. It's not that simple. The greatest threat we are facing is runaway climate change. This is caused by several positive feedback systems the Earth has. One is called the albedo effect. White surfaces, like ice, reflect more sun than dark surfaces, like the ocean. As the Earth warms, more ice melts, making more dark surfaces, melting more ice. It's a never-ending cycle. The scariest part about this is that we are still burning fossil fuels. It is estimated that we can burn 565 gigatons worth of carbon before we get into a very dangerous place. Unfortunately, we have located and borrowed against 2,795 gigatons worth of carbon. The fuel is still underground, but it won't be for long if the fossil fuels companies have anything to say about it. If we continue on the path we are on today, by 2300, there will be temperatures of 170 degrees some places on Earth. More than half of the species on Earth will go extinct, and there will be no stopping climate change. Emissions need to stop and start declining rapidly by 2015 to prevent runaway climate change, the point of no return. Humans cannot live in 170 degree weather. Maybe we will live in climate controlled caves underground, but whatever our future, it will not look like today. This is pretty painful stuff. How can I keep from feeling powerless and lost? Eat smart. Buy organic and locally grown foods. Avoid processed items. Try growing some of your own food. Eat low on the food chain, at least one meat-free meal a day, since 18% of carbon dioxide emissions come from the production of meat and dairy. Food writer Michael Pollan sums it up best. Eat food, not too much, mostly plants. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Throw away less. By recycling half of your household waste, you can save up to 2,400 pounds of carbon dioxide annually. By using rechargeable batteries, you can reduce your carbon footprint by up to 1,000 pounds. Save electricity and reduce global warming by turning off the light switch every time you leave a room and only using as much light as you need to. Remember to turn off your computers, TVs, and video players whenever you're not using them in order to conserve electricity. Remember. Electricity uses carbon too. Use less heat and air conditioning. If you move your thermostat down 2 degrees in the winter and up 2 degrees in the summer, you can save up to $100 and 2,000 pounds of carbon dioxide per year. Drive smart. Less driving means fewer emissions. Besides saving money on gasoline, walking and biking are great forms of exercise. 
carpool and use public transportation to help reduce CO2 levels. If everyone were to reduce their gasoline use by just 10%, we would help keep 2.8 billion tons of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere each year. When you go to the store, make sure to consider the energy required to make and ship the products you are buying. You can reduce your carbon footprint by buying locally made products and food, and by avoiding products that take a lot of energy to make, package, or ship. Use less water. Low flow shower heads can reduce your emissions by 350 pounds of carbon dioxide annually. Wash your clothes in cold water to reduce your use of hot water and then let them air dry. This change alone can save 500 pounds of carbon dioxide annually. Inform yourself. Knowledge is your most powerful weapon. The more you know, the more you can help. There is no other possible future. This is climate change. We're living it right now. We don't have time to reverse what we've done, and we never will. What we do have is unique and so powerful. It's all that we've ever had. The ability to care. We know what it means to live with the Earth as we do now. We have stories and memories to fight for, and they hold so much. The time for preventative action is gone. We have to change the way we live. It's not going to be easy, but it has to be now. The seven billion of us on this Earth, we're the ones with the chance to change the world of tomorrow. So share this video. Share your own Earth story, because we need people to know what's going on. We need to start acting for ourselves, for our children, for our Earth. Please wake up. It has to be you.